Hello guys, welcome back to the channel for another Azure video. Today's video will be a bit different. What I mean by that, it will be easier and more fun. We are going to use the PyTube library in order to convert a YouTube video into an MP3 file. And we are going to use a, the Flask framework, you know, the famous Flask framework and host a web application on Azure. I wanted to download the podcast with Lex Freeman and Andrew Huberman the other day, and that's how I came up with the idea. Of course, there are plenty of websites that convert YouTube videos into MP3 files, but you know, you have to click 1 million buttons and pop-ups to download the file. So I thought it must be a better way and an easier way using Python. And there is this PyTube library. So with this library, we can download the video or we can download only the audio of the video. In our case, we want only the audio, but we are going to see both cases. Then we are going to use a very simple Flask template provided on Azure documentation to host a web app on Azure. We are going to provide the video URL and it will give us back the MP3 file. In other words, we are going to create a web app and host it on Azure, which is quite easy and fun and entertaining. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. The first step is to actually search a quick start, you know, tutorial of how to deploy a Python web app to Azure app service. This web page will come up and if you go, if you scroll down, you will see a sample application on GitHub provided by Microsoft. So download this on your local machine. Download the application, the code from GitHub and open app.py and it will, you will see this code here, which is a very basic Flask application that has a form that renders an HTML with a form. You provide the name and it displays your name back, right? So let's run this and see what we get. And follow this link here on your local host. This is the web app. So if you type, you know, your name, click on say hello, and it will give you that uh, result here. Hello, Apostolos. It's nice to meet you. And that is it. Okay, so we have this web app. Now it's time to use our PyTube library in order to convert YouTube videos into MP3 files. The first thing we need to do is import the PyTube library from PyTube import YouTube, right? And then we also need the PyTube progress bar. So from PyTube dot CLI, right? Import on progress. And this will display, display a progress bar when you download the video. And the last thing we need to import is PyTube dot exceptions import the generic PyTube error. Of course, if you go into requirements.txt, we need to uh, actually uh, place here PyTube as well in the requirements. Let's go back into our application. And now here under slash hello, where we receive the name that we placed on the form in the HTML page before, here we are going to write our code. And let's create a YouTube object. And we can do that by using YouTube. And here we need to provide a link. So what would be the link? For the time being, let's uh, use a, just use a static link. Let me get one. That's a link from one of my YouTube videos, right? So here we provide the link and then we can also use on pro progress callback or you can use on complete callback, whatever you like, then on progress, which is the one that we imported from the PyTube CLI, right? Perfect. And this will display a progress bar when you download a video into your command line, if it takes long enough, of course. The next thing we need to do is actually display the streams from this YouTube object. Let me switch to PyTube documentation so you can get an idea of what we are talking about here. 
You can see all the steps of how to install PyTube. If you install PyTube, of course, you can check the source code. There is a quick start demo here of how to create, uh, you know, uh, how to use PyTube. Of course, as we already saw from PyTube, we have to import the YouTube object, provide the link, and it has all those, uh, you know, properties here on progress callback or on complete callback, etc., etc. And then we need to work with the streams. So there are progressive streams and thus streams. If you notice, there are some streams listed that have both a video codec and an audio codec, while others just have video or just audio. This is the this is a result of YouTube supporting a streaming technique called DAS. So now, if you uh, if you want the highest quality stream, you have to download separately, you know, the video and separately uh, the audio, and then merge them using uh, software like FFmpeg, right? But uh, we are not going to do that. We are going to get the highest resolution video uh, and that would be with audio all, uh, all together, which would result to uh, 720p uh, resolution. Okay, so now let's display the YouTube streams from our YouTube object. So we can do that by using dot streams. Here we are. And you, we can run the web app, follow the local host, just provide the whatever name you want, click on say hello, and let's wait for the video to get the results. And here, as you can see, right, we have all those options, uh, the video slash MP4, the resolution, FPS, the codec, etc., etc. You can see there are multiple versions of uh, resolution, and we can also have the audio type separately. If you want to download the video, it's very easy. So uh, there are plenty of options to choose the stream you want by using the iTag or, for example, by uh, filtering, right? You can filter and click on progressive, let's say true or false, whatever you want, if you want the highest uh, resolution without the audio so click on true type a true and then click on uh, the order by resolution and then the descending order and select the first one so this would give you and then actually uh, uh, dot download and this will download the video in your local uh, in your local uh, directory, but it would be only the video with the highest resolution, but without audio. So if you want the video uh, with the audio and that has the highest resolution, you don't have to do all that. You can click on get get highest resolution and dot download right. And if you do that. It's going to download this stream that is about uh, 720 resolution and an MP4 file type into your local directory, and that's it. So you will have the whole video. But in our case, we want only the audio. How can we do that? So let's. Uh, no, that would be audio in this case. So that would be equals to youtube.streams and then we need to filter and select the audio only audio true and then order by let's say if we want to order by uh, hmm, let's use for example abr to order by the abr attribute and then uh, order by then use uh, descending order right and dot first and then we can use audio dot download and that would download the video in our local directory let's remove that print statement here 
and we can run the code that actually see the audio, right? So let's run the code again. Follow the link to your local host. Click on say hello and let's wait for the video to be downloaded. You see here we have this uh, video downloaded. It's a WebM file and it's only the audio. So if you click that, it will only give you the audio, right? This is how easy it is, right? To download the video or if you want the audio, download the audio only. But we want, actually, we have a web app, so we want to download, to actually to return a file, an audio file to the users for them to download. How can we do that? So we don't have to store the whole video locally or, you know, in a, on Azure, in a database or whatever, in the blob storage, and then uh, pick it up again and give it to the user. We can create a binary stream of in-memory data using the I.O. library. So in, from I.O. import bytes I.O. That's how you create uh, a binary stream, uh, in-memory binary stream. And what, we have an option here, right? So let's create a buffer. And that would be bytes, I.O. Let's create an object, a buffer. And here, what we have to do is click on audio. And then if you scroll down, well, you will see an option which says stream to buffer perfect like right it fits us perfectly so provide the buffer here and let now this would uh, this audio will be streamed to the buffer and of course now the buffer the position of the buffer is at the end we want it to go again uh in the beginning to the beginning so what we have to do here is type buffer dot seek and position zero to go back to the beginning of the stream because now we want to send back this buffer which is a binary stream of data or our audio file in this case and we have to use from flask uh, type one more thing and that would be send file right so here instead delete that and now we need to return this file, this buffer as a file, this binary stream of audio as a file. Let's return, click on send file. Now let's provide the parameters. That would be the buffer itself, buffer, comma, as attachment file, as attach, uh, so, as attachment, that's true. Then we want attachment file name. Now, this is important because actually you remember, uh, remember before that we, we checked the file that we downloaded, the audio was of extension WebM, but we want extension MP3. So we have to rename the file. How can we get the title of the file? That's easy. So here, audio.title, very, very convenient. Everything is provided for us dot mp3 pretty easy right comma meme type and then let's say audio slash mp3 that's fine we are going to return so this stream this binary stream as a file to the user what else is left i think uh, we need to use a try and cut statement here if the video fails to be you know like if we fail to download the video so accept come on pytube error print or raise or whatever you want uh, or pass error here and then we return the audio stream as a file so let's change that to url because right the user will provide the video url uh, on our html form and we are going to get it here, this video URL. And instead of this link, which is a static link, we are going to use URL here and convert the video that the user requested, right? 
perfect let's go into our templates here let's change the labels so here instead of that please provide url to convert and instead of say hello just type convert and i think we are good to go so let's run the code and see what happens follow the link on your local machine here is our web application so now the user has to provide a video url to convert from youtube let's provide this one click on convert and now we expect to download the audio file a converted you know audio file from the video let's see what happens the video has converted successfully go into your downloads folder and you will see the mp3 file there our web application is ready so what's the next step the next step is to host this web app on azure and how can we do that let's see first we need to install an extension azure app services extension search for that and here where it says azure app service install the extension and then go to your azure environment and click on this globe here where it says azure app service click on that click on create new web app provide a name like apple like uh, web app demo or something like that click on that then select the resource group click on the resource group that you have already on azure the runtime stack that is python 3.9 for me create a new service uh, app service plan the same name and select here the free tier of course we don't need application insights right now so we skip that step and as you can see we are deploying our web app to azure we are creating the web app and then we are going to deploy the code right so it will take a few minutes so the web app has been created successfully now it's time to deploy our code so click on that globe here azure app services click on deploy web app select the folder that you host the application then select the web app that we just created and then deploy click on deploy and in a few minutes it will be deployed you can check the output window here to see the results and when it's ready you can browse on the internet and find your web app and yeah as you can see here we have already hosted our web app on azure you can see the domain here it's not our local host is uh, the azure services app services here we have hosted our web app we can provide the url click on convert and it's going to download as you can see the file uh, in your download uh, folder as you just witnessed is very it's very easy to create a web app and host it on azure and it's also very easy to you know convert youtube videos get uh, statistics get all those you know titles and that kind of stuff from using the pytube library with just a few lines of code we were able to do all those things like you know create download uh, and convert a youtube video we we didn't even have to you know save the video to store the video somewhere and then uh pick it up again and give it to the user we just used a buffer and it was so easy to change the extension right it just with a few lines of code and you know like all uh, the flask application that was provided on azure documentation we created a web app that we hosted on azure and it's so easy to do that right now you know no you don't, we don't have to handle any infrastructure or anything like that straight into coding then we deploy the app and that's it i really like it this is it guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you like the video please click the like button leave a comment and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one thank you